Okay, now what if we want to draw branched alkanes? Now, this is going to be a little bit more interesting because normally we would do this with lots of practice and we would use the whiteboards and it's going to be difficult for me to assess whether you can draw these things correctly, um, but it will be an important skill moving forward to university level chemistry. So um, it's definitely worthwhile and you want to make sure that you understand how to do it. So how do we do this? We want to um, I have some steps here for you on page seven, I believe. And what you're going to do first is always draw out the parent chain first, because that's going to help to orient you, and you can number it however you like, because you're the one who's getting to draw it this time. Then you can add your branches to the location, and then you can add, kind of fill things up with hydrogen atoms. So let's try this example first. So we've got 3-ethyl-2,4-dimethylpentane which is a component of gasoline. So I notice here the backbone is a pentane backbone. There is an ethyl on carbon number three. There are two methyls. One of them is on carbon two. One of them is on carbon four. Let's start with the backbone. So a pentane backbone means that I've got five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Arranged in the line like this. Let's number them so that we don't lose track of which one is which. And then we can add our branches. So we've got an ethyl on carbon number three. I know the ethyl needs to have two carbons in it. And I've got a methyl on carbon two and another methyl on carbon four. It doesn't matter if they go up or down. I'm going to put the methyls going down just so that it gets a little bit, uh, it doesn't get as crowded if we do it that way. Okay, now we remember that each carbon wants to form four bonds. We have to fill up these carbons with hydrogens. So the ones on the end will get three hydrogens because they want to have four bonds. This carbon already has three, one, two, three bonds. So it just wants one hydrogen here. Methyl carbon has got three hydrogens. This carbon number three also only wants one. These guys want two, and this one on the end, end carbons are called terminal carbons. It wants three as well. Carbon four in the backbone wants one. This methyl wants three. And this terminal carbon here wants three also. Then my structure starts to get a little bit clunky, which is the downside of the structural formula. But I've got all my carbons and my hydrogens here. And because this is an alkane, it should still follow the general formula, Cn, H, 2n, plus 2. And so if you're doing this on a test, or if you're supposed to count here, you could then use this general formula to make sure that if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we've got 9 carbons, we should have twice that plus two. So we should have 20 hydrogens. Let's try another example. So isomers, uh, we'll talk about in a, a future lesson, but isomers have different structural formulas, and but the same general formula, so the same number of carbons and hydrogens. So we can draw structural formulas. Um, uh, we'll do the structural formula for the first molecule here, and we'll do the condensed structural for the second, so we have a chance to practice that too. Let's make this, oops, make this a little bit bigger. Maybe help me draw this more clearly for you. Okay, so my first one here is 2,3,4-trimethylpentane. What are you doing? Go away. 2, 3, 4, trimethylpentane. So I'm going to start by laying out my backbone. See, it's got a pentane backbone, so that should be five carbons in the backbone. One, two, three, four, five. And this one's got three methyls on carbons. Two, three, and four. So kind of like I did before, I'm going to face one of them up, and I'm going to face the next one down and this one up, just to give myself a little bit more room to work with. 
And then I've placed in all my carbons. Now I can come and fill up my carbons with hydrogens. Again, each carbon wants to have four bonds. So I'm going to add enough hydrogens until that's true. Cool. Okay. And it should still follow my general formula that I have up here too. Now let's try this one. Tetramethylbutane. Now that's interesting because I don't see any locants, right? Where are the numbers here? Um, it turns out that there are some cases where you don't actually need a locant because there's only one place where the methyls could go. So let's see if we can figure out why that's true in this case. Let's start with the backbone. Backbone is a butane. So that means I've got four carbons in the backbone. And then I have tetramethyl. So that means there are four methyls. Not a methyl on carbon four, it means there are four methyl groups. You might say, well, there would be lots of places where they could go. How do we know? And the reason why we know is the methyls can't be on these end carbons because if there was a methyl on this end carbon, then it wouldn't be a butane backbone anymore, right? If this was my molecule, then the longest backbone would look like this and it would actually be a pentane backbone. It wouldn't be a butane backbone. So that means that the methyls can't be on the terminal carbons here or they would extend the backbone. Methyls have to be on the central carbons and on the central carbons it turns out well there are only four spots where a methyl can go which is why I don't need a locant for these methyls. I only need to say that I have four of them. Now we've asked for a condensed structural here so that means I'm not drawing out the hydrogens like this. It'll look a little bit neater and I just need to still do my math. How many carbons, how many hydrogens does each carbon need in order to get up to um, having four bonds? So this terminal one has got one already, means it needs three hydrogens to fill up its bonding capacity. This guy up here has got one bond already, so same deal. Now this carbon here, it already has four bonds, so that means it doesn't want any hydrogens at all. It's already satisfied. These ones on the outside with one bond, they all want three as well. And this middle carbon two, it doesn't want any hydrogens because it's already satisfied with what it has. Let's clean these threes up a little bit, but um, this is then is gonna be my three, three, this is gonna be my condensed structural diagram. 